Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, I thought I would bring you along as I prepare some snacks for my family. I'm mainly doing this because of in the upcoming weeks, I have Aubrey's birthday party to plan for and prepare and decorate. And I really wanted to just ease things up for me throughout the week so that when the kids get hungry, I have snacks already prepared for them and I can just pull from what I've already kind of prepped. So if you are excited for a party prep video, make sure you are subscribed because you will not want to miss this unicorn birthday that we have coming up. But anyways, we are starting off by cutting up some watermelon, which if you have like a no fail way to pick a watermelon, please let me know. I kind of went against my normal decision making process on picking a watermelon this time around and it still tasted great. So I really don't know what the you know, no fail way is to pick a watermelon. So yeah, let me know because I would love to have perfect watermelon every time. But one thing that I do want to share with you as far as watermelon goes is I have found that storing my watermelon in this kind of double decker pot where the top layer is a strainer and the bottom layer is just you know a basic pot. This is probably one you would cook spaghetti in or something like that. But anyways, this pot is the best way to store watermelon because all of the juice from the watermelon that would normally just collect at the bottom of a container now gets you know strained from the watermelon collects in the bottom basin and your watermelon stays much more fresh than it would if it was stored just in a container where it kind of sits in its own juice and you will see that even just like right after cutting this watermelon there is already a lot of juice that has kind of strained off and would normally make that watermelon go bad so again this is like my tip for watermelon definitely store it in like something like this if you don't have this type of pot you can store it in a strainer and then in another bowl maybe that would work but the watermelon stays so fresh for much longer Moving on, we are prepping some yogurt popsicles. I got this silicone, it's like a popsicle, it looks like little popsicles. It's a little mold from Michael's and they have so many cute designs, but I liked how this one looked like popsicles, had a little divot for a cake pop stick. So I could make cake pops with this, but my go-to is just kind of using just different yogurts, flavored vanilla, blueberry, strawberry, whatever we're in the mood for. And I fill this up. I I have purchased acrylic cake pop sticks because I use these so often it would be wasteful of me if I used the like kind of papery cake pop sticks so anyways I have purchased the acrylic ones and just insert them and throw this in the freezer and then once it's hardened I do transfer them to like another container so that Aubrey or Jack can go and grab one and then I just kind of repeat the process but I gotta say I I really feel like these popsicles have saved Jack from a lot of teething pain when he was getting like more teeth in. I didn't see him really complaining that much and I think it's because he was just living off these popsicles. It, it was nice and cold, it tastes good, and he just, he loves eating these. This is like our go-to if he's just kind of fussy and want something we put him in his high chair give him a popsicle and it's all good and the portion you're getting really isn't anything close to like a serving size so you don't have to feel bad if you have like three or four and of course it's a healthier option than some other sweets that you might be tempted to give to your kids so i don't feel bad at all when aubrey just wants a snack and then i say okay go grab a popsicle and she'll go to the freezer and grab one and be satisfied
So next up, we are peeling a bunch of cuties. I think that was the brand that we got at this point. We kind of get different brands depending on when we're in the mood to buy them and what store we're at. But I don't know if you guys are like me, I don't enjoy peeling these things and I don't enjoy peeling them when I have hungry kids who just want you know more food and they're eating it quicker than I can peel it but I also know that if you peel too much and you leave them out just like on a plate in the kitchen or something they're gonna get hard and then they're you know the kids aren't gonna want to eat them but I have found that if you peel a lot and store it in an airtight container they stay nice and soft and don't get that like crusty, dry outer coating. And it's just as if you had just peeled them. So that is why I am peeling a whole bunch here and storing it in an airtight container for the week or however long it will last for us. Normally I would separate each individual kind of slice, but I kind of just wanted to get most of the white stuff that part of the peel. I wanted to get most of that off and then I figured, okay, I can deal with like the little tiny remains <laughs> as I'm feeding them to my children. But like I said, this is kind of like a hack that I do for myself just to make my life easier. And it definitely has worked and saved me a lot of peeling at random moments throughout the week when I can just peel it all at once and store it away. So if you try this tip, let me know how you guys like it and if you will be continuing to try it or use it in your day-to-day -day life. Okay, so last up, we are going to be making some hard boiled eggs. Aubrey uh, enjoys eating the egg whites. She doesn't really care for the yolks. And with a hard boiled egg, if, it, if it's not like a deviled egg or an, an egg salad, I typically just eat the egg white as well. And I don't feel so bad about wasting the yolks because our chickens actually love eating the yolks. It's really funny to watch them. Like if we throw a yolk in, they will just swarm to it and attack it and devour the yolk, which is kind of weird because it's like from the chicken <laughs> eating its own yolk, but you know, it is what it is. But anyways, the way I make my hard boiled eggs is I try to have my eggs close to room temperature. Sometimes I put them in cold and I don't know how much it really changes the end result. But anyways, I get some water boiling and then I place the eggs in the boiling water, let it boil for 17 minutes and then immediately transfer them to an ice bath to stop the cooking. And for the most part, I have eggs that peel very easily. There's not usually like a lot of shells that are really stuck to the egg white. Although sometimes that happens and I don't know if that's maybe because the egg was too cold when it went in Like if it didn't cook enough or if it like overcooked a bit You know if it was like oh the first egg I put in and the last one I pulled out or something like that But overall I have to say my method of 17 minutes boiling to an ice bath has given me consistently like good eggs There obviously again are some that are kind of hit or miss and honestly, my issues may just be because I'm dealing with more fresh eggs. Usually when you get yours from a store, they're weeks old. And my guess is that there's like an air bubble in there that's a little bit bigger. And maybe that gives the egg room to hard boil better and not stick to the shell using my method. But anyways, that's for another kind of egg story. But like I said, my method in general has provided me satisfying eggs and that's why I continue to do it this way. So if you give it a try, let me know how your eggs turn out. But I'd like to thank you guys for watching today's video and following along as I prep my snacks. Again, don't forget, I have a party prep video coming up. We're gonna be cleaning the house to get ready for the party. I'm gonna try to film a party like take down and clean with me video. So there's a lot Lot of fun party stuff to come. This is kind of my general September schedule. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like this video and I will catch you in the next one. Woohoo! You've made it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. 
please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness. And I will catch you in the next one.